Well, Dr. Jill, welcome to our 10 wing challenge. Thanks, Anthony. Yeah. Really appreciate the invitation. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm happy to have you here and glad you joined. But before we begin, where are you on the spice spectrum? Like, do you eat spicy food? Did you do anything to prepare for this? Um, on a scale of one to 10, I'm probably a five. A five, um, okay. Like if I go eat Indian food, uh -huh. I'm always gonna go somewhere middle of the road on the okay. spice factor. So I like spice. I don't try to go for heat to be a hero. <laughs> okay. Well, you are going to be a heat hero by the end of this. Cause I know you'll make it to the, the end, but let's go ahead and start this wing for you, this wing for me. Okay. We'll go ahead and take a bite. Glad you have more confidence than I do. Now, I've heard that you have a pretty impressive flock of chickens. <laughs> they even have their own living quarters called the palace that you built from the ground up. And mm -hmm. your fantasy football team name is the Mother Cluckers. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, a huge chicken fan. Do you have a favorite chicken out of the group? And do you have any reservations of taking on this challenge? Um, they do live in the chicken palace. They live a very good life. Um, I do have a favorite. Um her name was Kiwi until she um, oh. proved to be a rooster, <laughs> and I had to rehome him. So uh, Kiwi's there no longer. So they're all my they're all my favorites. They're all your favorites. Okay. Do I have any reservations about this challenge because yeah. it's chicken? Yeah. No okay. minor layers and their pets. These lovely chickens were made for to be fryers. So they were okay. Go. Good. Mm -hmm. I offered cauliflower wings but we couldn't find any so oh we had to no. go with this okay. i'm a meat eater yeah <laughs> all right well let's go on to the next wing we've got um the curry verde okay this one's supposed to have a lot of good flavor i'm watching you eat okay mm, it smells good it smells really good so um i've been told that you and your husband brady and maybe even your whole family love to travel and eat food maybe even uh, you could be called um, globe-trotting foodies, <laughs> but I want to know what's the best meal you, you've ever had mm -hmm. and where did you have it? Oh gosh, that's so difficult. Um, we just got back from Iceland and had amazing food, amazing seafood. Um, but my favorite food is in New Orleans. New Orleans, okay. Mm -hmm. So again, I love, I love spice. I love a uh -huh. lot of melding of flavors. So you give me a good gumbo or jambalaya. Nice jambalaya, slow. spicy yep. gumbo. Okay. Yep, slow, low and slow. You can tell it's been cooked and uh, have you for ever a long tried time. to make that yourself at home? Yes, I even grew yeah. okra in my garden okay. one year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just to see what it was like. It's really kind of a pain to grow, and you have to use gloves to pick it and everything. So why do you have to use gloves to pick it? Because it has this sort of um, oil or something it okay. gives off, and if you get it in your eyes or on your skin, it can kind of burn. So you have okay. to be careful when you're chopping it too. Which is a good reminder. We're touching hot sauce. So hands away from the eyes. That's one of my biggest concerns <laughs> okay. today. So if you see me going for it, please stop me. Do yeah. the same for me. We'll okay. keep an eye out for each okay. other. All right, let's move on to the next wing. We've got our zesty lemon pepper. Another really good, tasty one, I think. Yeah? <laughs> I like to do the sniff test first. So visiting all of the national parks is kind of a, let's say, a, a bucket list item for me. You know, I'm okay. just riffing off that travel from the last question. Uh, it seems you've been to many of them, maybe even have a goal to go to most of them. Mm -hmm. Which park was your favorite? And which park is a good fit for those, uh, maybe for their first time out to a national park? Mm, okay, good questions. Yeah, I love the national parks. Our family's big hikers. Mm. I love um, anywhere I go, I'm going to try to hike. Even in Nebraska, good hiking. Okay. Um, probably my favorite. Oh, that's so hard. I'm going to go with Acadia, Acadia in Maine. In Maine. It's okay. small, but it's beautiful. I went there in October, and you can eat all the lobster, too. Okay. Um, but really cool hiking, and you can even do some uh, scaling of walls, but it's it's still easy hiking, okay. um, and so that's really fun. Um, what was the other part of that question? So what recommend? would you recommend for a first time, uh, maybe somebody going there for the first time, mm -hmm. which one would you recommend? Mm -hmm. Gosh. Maybe just because it's a little bit easier with hiking, I'd almost say um, White Sands okay. or somewhere like that. Where's White Sands? 
Uh, I think New Mexico. Okay. Yeah, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And maybe not quite as far of a trek if you're from. Yeah, the depending Midwest. on where you're from, yeah. and it's not as strenuous. You know, mm -hmm. if you go do Angels Landing or something in Zion, yeah. that's scary. You know, people yeah. die. <laughs> so oh man. Okay. I wouldn't make that your first trip. It might scare you away. Okay. But I have I have not met a national park I didn't love. So. Well, I'm gonna take some notes on those and maybe take my family to a couple of them. Cool. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to our next wing. Uh, so fourth in the lineup, we've got the chili. Uh, I'm not even gonna try and say all that. It's the Chico Ghost. Ooh, Chipotle. So, with Chipotle. In Chipotle, there? a little bit of chocolate, yeah. maybe picking up the spice level a little bit. It smells good. Hmm. So far, they've all had good flavor. Good flavor. And I that's was a little important. bit nervous about that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. Tell us about your favorite teacher, because you were a teacher. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. tell us about your favorite teacher growing up, or, or maybe the one who inspired you to pursue education as mm -hmm. a profession. Uh, and then why were they your favorite, or what did they do to yeah. inspire you? I, I was blessed with a, a ton of amazing teachers. I grew up in a really small town, 17 kids in my class, wow. 700 people in the town. But we had an incredible school and education system, so great leadership and teachers there. But two really come to mind two okay um one my language arts teacher um mr blessing so shout out mr okay. blessing because um, he might watch this all uh, right he was just an amazing inspiration um for me um, i ended up being a language arts teacher for 17 years oh, but wow. okay. um, i was also on the speech team and that's really where um he helped me and helped me develop uh, that confidence in uh -huh. front of a group and how to prepare for those types of things um so he was incredibly supportive in that way. Okay. But I also had uh, my my shop teacher, my shop woods teacher. teacher. Okay. And um, I graduated high school in 1987. At that time, there weren't many girls that took any of the industrial tech classes. Okay. Um, the teacher uh, kind of he was trying to grow that, and so he encouraged some of us to give it a try um, in junior high, and then in high school, I went on took three years of wood shop. <clears throat> it's one of my favorite hobbies now. Uh, doing woodworking, okay. uh, refinishing, learned so much about that. And he's the first person who ever said to me, you should be a teacher. Oh, wow. um, because he saw me helping other kids in the shop who okay. were maybe struggling or scared or um, just even coming up with ideas. And yeah. I had never thought about it mm -hmm. um, until he said that and it always stuck in the back of my mind. So I went to college thinking something different and ended up going to education so he gave you skills with wood and confidence to do something new mm -hmm. and pursue a career that is pretty phenomenal yeah great guy mr wellman so. mr wellman rest there. in peace yeah okay mm -hmm. all right well let's move on to the next one number five uh the los calientes rojo Sounds uh, bad. some say this <laughs> is really mild some say the heat picks up I'm, I'm curious to see what you think it sounds hot it smells hot mm -hmm. Nothing? I'm waiting for the afterburn. Like, All right, there's uh, no afterburn on this one, maybe. I don't want to be overconfident <laughs> because I'm getting nervous. <laughs> I think you're doing great. Thank um, you. But, but talking about teaching, being inspired by teachers to become a teacher, um, you spent 30 plus years in education from, from, I'm guessing, the whole gauntlet of any phase of that uh, that you could do within teaching. Um, before transitioning to ed tech, which you're, you're doing now, mm -hmm. uh, how have you seen schools and the learning environments change or evolve over time? Well, it's interesting because I think schools, I, I feel like schools are taking a bit of a bad rap right now. Okay. We've got a lot of, there's a lot of threats, there's a lot of pressure on mm -hmm. educators and school systems. So I think over my time in education, it's really been that evolution from where I'm just sending my kids there to learn math and uh -huh. how to read and write and those types of things to the whole evolution of social emotional learning and knowing the whole child and educating the whole child and it's really what we need to do to okay. be able to be effective and uh -huh. so um, it's really important but it's a lot on teachers right sure. and when you're thinking individualized education for every kid in your class and you might have 15 20 25 yeah. 30 kids in a class if you have more than 30 kids in your class god bless you because that's too many sure. no matter what age but okay but yeah i think that's been the biggest change um is to see the pressure put upon the whole education system okay 
Yeah, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have any solutions for that or any thoughts on how that can be improved? Well, I think teacher training has improved a okay. ton, and so that's huge. When I think about my first year teaching versus yeah. my last year teaching, uh -huh. I learned so much. And hopefully your last year teaching is your best, or your last year doing anything. You know, Hopefully yeah. you're always growing and learning. Um, but it really is moving with the times, getting the proper um, supports in place for mm -hmm. your staff, your administration, your school. We need to have better school funding, mm. um, not just for teacher salaries, but so that buildings are safe, buildings are um, appropriate, kids have opportunities. Um, there's too much of a gap between the have and have nots. And for sure. um, it's a tough, it's a tough thing to fix though. I mean, I, I feel for our, um, government leaders too yeah. because it, it, there's not just a quick fix to no, be made yeah for it's sure. very complicated yeah. very complex mm -hmm. well let's move on to the next wing uh we've got the <laughs> spicy shark uh a former intern of ours said this was the most exciting one for them to try okay hopefully it's uh exciting for you to, to what do, why does it smell like cinnamon or what you know, I, I don't like? know. It's It's got okay. Mako Shark in there, I believe. Maybe that's the cinnamon. <laughs> okay, here's right. to Shark Week, my favorite. <laughs> so we talked about being in education, being inspired, what you've learned over the years, and now you're in ed tech. Um, what's the most eye-opening, challenging, or surprising part of that transition and What's something that you think uh, ed tech companies get wrong? Mm -hmm. That one's hot. That's got a bit That's of an hot? afterburn. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm scared because it's only number six. You know, I'll, I'll take some milk with you. Okay. All right. So the most challenging thing about moving from education to ed tech, mm -hmm. um, just not knowing how, like a school can be looked at as a business or a district can be looked at as a business, uh -huh. but it's not because our business is all people, right? Yeah. And so <clears throat> moving into the business world has been just eye-opening in that way that there's so many other things that you care about, return on investment, bottom line, oh, yeah. all those types of things. The budget allocations are so different, but the thing I think that we get right at Class Intercom okay. yes. is that we've always kept the people first. Okay. We keep no, you know, and I was worried about losing that when yeah. I made this jump. Yeah. But it is. It's our. It's part of our mission. Everyone here believes it. It's about the, the students. It's about those teachers that lead them. It's about the school leadership that um, allows them to take these chances um, yeah. to share their voices on social media, um, and and put that money towards it too. And so, um, I would say that's where a lot of ed tech companies miss the mark miss the because mark. they're focused on business not okay. on education they're focused on the sales bringing new clients in but not seeing their transition mm -hmm. of adoption of the product but then how are they being supported after right. which you referenced yeah. earlier like how do we support teachers mm -hmm. in an ever-changing landscape and so you would say being there for them as a person yeah def like why are we what's our why like yeah. we know the how and all that and yeah. definitely i have to we have to sell here if yeah. we don't sell our product we mm -hmm. are no longer going to exist mm -hmm. but we don't need to sell it just to sell it we yeah. sell it as a solution to really help schools and i love being able to share those stories right about Absolutely. amazing teachers um, amazing students yeah all those great things happen yeah good mm -hmm. stuff good yeah. stuff all right so you said this shark was a little spicy mm -hmm. we'll move on to the jalapeno Chico. Okay. So, so I think we're going a little bit down maybe with jalapeno, I would assume. I've had your jalapenos from the garden. Uh -huh. They're pretty spicy. We'll see how this stacks up to your... I'm just, I'm bracing for it You're being bracing. worse because it's next in line. Okay. I wear gloves when I do my jalapenos okay. from the garden. So. Well, we could have got you gloves today. I wish I would I'm going to try not to touch the ice. Okay. okay. We're doing good so far. Okay. Ooh. Mm. And you're going, mmm, licking your lips. It's so Yay. good. It's so good. Um, so I've heard you talk about the onset of Google and what it looked like to be in the classroom mm -hmm. as a teacher, um, you know, in, uh, in the early 2000s, you know, how that changed mm -hmm. perceptions, what we think we're doing with teaching and, and student access to information. Do you see similarities to uh, Google when we talk about AI in the classroom? Uh, mm -hmm. as that's rolling out and evolving and changing. Yeah, well, it's interesting just seeing the evolution, even when you think about going from 
pencils to ballpoint pens to uh -huh. typewriters to electric typewriters to computers, right? Like think about being in the classroom mm -hmm. for all of those changes. It's scary when you're taking something away. The calculator, mm -hmm. right? Any advances in technology are scary because we want kids. Sometimes that little spice. The little spice again. Okay. Throat. Ooh, I'm going to stick with milk. Stick with milk. Okay. <clears throat> that one was good. Mm. We can send the bottle home with you if you'd like. That just went down the wrong tube. Now okay. here comes the watery eyes. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Careful around the eyes. There okay. we go. Um, but yeah, so when Google first came in, any type of search engines, it was like kids are going to cheat, mm -hmm. right? And that mm -hmm. was a big concern in the yeah. classroom. But it was really how do we harness this amazing tool mm -hmm. and get it to help us do better? Mm -hmm. And once we kind of, you know, you let go of those inhibitions and then say, okay, let me use it for good, right? Yeah. I've said this before. You can stab someone in the eye with a pencil okay. or you can write a great novel, yes. right? It's all yes. about how okay. you use it. So yeah. how can we use Google to really help? Well, then the same way. So, you know, I used to teach Boolean logic and we used to have to take field trips to the to the library and all uh -huh. that. Google yeah. changed all of that. Yeah. And that was during my my time as a teacher. So it brought it all to the classroom, which is amazing. Again, levels the playing field for a lot of students. Yeah. So same thing with AI. AI scarier. Don't get me wrong. I'm yeah. not equating Google and AI. Sure. But AI is amazing. I think we want to learn how to harness its power. I think we want to learn how to best use it in the classroom. So again, we need to train our administrators, train our teachers, mm -hmm. train our students, and, and they can show us a lot of that too. But for sure. Yeah. Really th help use it for good. Yeah. And they're coming into that with not all that prior knowledge of going from pencils to Google. Right. And possibly they're coming in with AI at the forefront for them, and, and that mm -hmm. might be natural, and they may pick it up a lot faster and teach us something. For yeah, sure. yeah. But trying to figure out how to use it for good, right? For good, not yes. just for the shortest, easiest route, no. but to work smarter, not harder. For sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah, so my lips are on fire. Your lips are on fire. Uh -huh. Okay. The milk helping at all? Mm, it's washing it. It washed it's, that wash it it washed that tickle okay. down. But that one did taste good. That tasted good. Like I might I might take that home. Right. I like that one. Okay. But it's hot. Okay. Well let's move on to our, our next wing, uh, the bomb. Mm -hmm. uh, this one's everybody's favorite. No. For heat. No, I think you're lying. It even smells bad. Look, I'm I'm shaking a little bit. <laughs> this one makes me scared. Here we go. Okay. okay. It's a good big bite. I was trying not to let it touch my lips. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. The lip heat is something different for mm -hmm. sure. I feel like it blistering. Mm. Is that a worry of yours, blisters? Uh-huh. Okay. Has that ever happened to anyone? Not that I know of. Okay. I, I've never experienced that. And, and I eat wings hot sauce all the time. But Yeah, that one doesn't have a great flavor. No, not, not the best flavor. Okay, I'm right. ready. It's While you up. sip your milk. Um, so social media is an ever-changing landscape. Uh, new platforms uh, hit the market. Others change hands or rebrand, mm -hmm. something we've seen over the last year. What's your professional and, and personal strategy for keeping up with uh, social media changes? And what are you most excited about uh, social media lately? Mm -hmm. It's really hard to concentrate when your face is on fire. Okay. As you make that question, I just want you to know that. Okay. Um, trying to keep up is tough, especially when you've got Elon and mm -hmm. you know making crazy decisions on the daily. Sorry, Elon, if you're listening, <laughs> but you are. Um, <laughs> Or, you know, Mark Zuckerberg, all the things, right? Mm -hmm. There's so many crazy changes happening. So it's keeping up on the daily. So I'm on a lot of, um, like I'm subscribed to a lot of alerts that just tell you yeah. about um, social media updates. And mm -hmm. then I also think being around people like you, okay, um, our CEO, all our leadership here, uh -huh. and all of us contributing, you know, like, did you see this? Here's yes. what's up, all those kinds of things. Um, because it is difficult. And sometimes uh -huh. it's difficult even to understand how, why, what are they thinking? How does it impact me personally? How does it impact me professionally? Uh -huh. um, but it is just being in the know and being willing to learn from everyone else because I don't think one person can know no. all of it, right? So it's tough, for it sure. It is tough, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we've got resident experts that know just the, the Facebook stuff and just mm -hmm. the Twitter stuff. Yeah. And then we have to share that out to the company and, and hopefully our clients as well. Yeah. yeah, right. And people do come to us as the experts. And okay. so I think it's being humble enough to say when we don't know, but we'll look into that and find out. But for I sure. do rely on you and our support team a lot because you guys, especially our support 
people they're so in the trenches they're yeah. hearing people's concerns you know mm -hmm. every day all the time so i love that about them and they're always wanting to share and help me too and absolutely help you and others mm -hmm. all right that so one was hot the, hot the bomb was hot okay yeah <clears throat> and it wasn't your favorite taste mm -hmm. all right well hopefully it's getting a little better uh we're, we're gonna move on to the watermelon ghost so the first thing is watermelon that's sweet okay. right and and then go so Maybe let's have a little bit better flavor for you. Are you sweating at all? Oh, I'm always sweating when I'm okay. eating wings. <laughs> Don't take too deep a breath with this one. Okay. <laughs> Keep your mouth closed. And through the nose, maybe. Um, and I say that because things are, are heating up. Mm -hmm. So it's time to dig a, a little deeper. And I want to talk about purpose. Why do you do what you do? And, and what do you love about it? Mm -hmm. So it's interesting how I landed here. Like yeah. when I came out of college or high school, I never said, I want to run a social media company, right? Yeah. Which doesn't even exist, which is so crazy. And yeah. so when I was a high school administrator, I was dealing with a lot of, we were dealing with a lot of kids making bad choices okay. on social media. Those would filter into the school, and then we would have to deal with that discipline, right? Uh -huh. And we didn't have anything in place. Went for the research. What does it tell us? Yeah. Um, there wasn't much out there. For sure. So that's why I ended up doing my dissertation research in that okay. and found there's so much positive in kids telling their stories and not just teaching them digital citizenship, but letting them live it uh -huh. with our supervision, right? Yeah. Giving them feedback, giving them advice, teaching them how to do it, letting them know the ramifications and the power of social. Yeah. And so that's why I do what I do. Okay. The other part I kind of already mentioned is telling school stories yeah. because like I mentioned that, you know, if I had my teaching 30 years ago blasted out on social media, I don't think I'd be very proud. <laughs> okay. But I think today I'd be really proud. And I loved as an assistant principal going around to classrooms, I loved sharing stories out because our teachers are so good mm -hmm. and they're doing such great things with our students. And so, um, we have to tell those stories because yeah. we, we put up walls to keep our parents out. And yeah. We need to let them in and oh, see sure, the great sure. things that are happening. And that's why I do what I do and for why sure. I love to come to work every day. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we love having you here as a resident expert for schools and social media and education. You teach us pedagogy, I feel like, on a <laughs> weekly basis. It's uh, a good word. It is a good word. It's something I learned uh, just this year from you. So this is the last dab. I'll, I'll do a little dab, and then you can follow along just to see how much I do. Um, Remember that commercial, a little dab will do it? I think it was for Brill Cream or something. That shows how old I am. I missed that one. I think that was a little before my time, maybe. Gosh, do I have to dab? You don't have to dab. He'll um, judge me. You, if I you don't. might not. No, I don't think you'll be judged. But it's it is a tradition. Okay, I'm gonna put the lid on okay, because I don't want this spilled on anybody. Okay, very smart, very smart. Okay. okay. <clears throat> All right. So last wing, we dabbed. I'm gonna take a bite right where you dabbed. I see that. Okay. 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 Cheers. Cheers. Almost there. Apollo, it's reminding me of Rocky. Yeah. Feeling yeah. it. Maybe we'll have some Rocky in the background. There we go. <laughs> so you touched on this in your last answer, um, but you joined one of the first Class Intercom content generation workshops, maybe the first or second a few years ago, as a Class Intercom client, I believe, still teaching, maybe in administration. And now we're gearing up for the fourth edition of that. Uh, why is teaching and learning <clears throat> digital uh, responsibility and digital citizenship so important for for students, for teachers, for, for society maybe? Mm -hmm. Well, kind of like I meant, like when you're saying something or doing something of a very small audience, it's more controllable. Uh -huh. And I think sometimes, um, especially young people, adults do it too though, but they think before they act mm. and then you have to deal with the consequences. So as adults, our frontal lobe develops, we learn how to think about consequences before we do something. Probably uh -huh. why I was so worried about today. Yes, yeah, reservations. Because I knew how bad it was going to hurt and yeah. it does. Um, but I think we want to try to teach them how to do that and how to know how to harness the power. And we see a lot of the adults in their lives modeling poor 
citizenship online. Okay. Poor citizenship in general, you know. So um, I think that's why it's so important is to think before you act and wonder, is this helpful? Um, is it kind? Uh-huh. Is it making a difference? Like, I don't want it, want you to just be an influencer. I want you to make an impact, right? Sure. And and by when I say impact, I mean impact for good. And um, social media is can be the bane of your existence, but it can be so, so powerful. Yeah. And it's where I go. I learn so much. It's, um, you know, it's where you get your news, where you get your culture, where you connect with friends and family. Um, and so uh, that's why digital citizenship is so important, because we want to be good citizens of the world. And yeah. Um, that's really what we're connected with because it has th- that far-reaching power. Yeah, just because you're behind your phone doesn't mean you're actually impacting people out in the real world. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, congratulations. You made it all the way to the end. <gasps> I think you did it really well. Thanks. All right. There's a burn. There's a burn? Is yeah. it hitting you a little bit? Mm-hmm. No eyes. We, we're good nope, with that. No, didn't touch the eyes, so that okay. makes me happy. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for joining me today. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Anthony. Yeah.